Today we're going to talk all about campground etiquette. Okay. Do's and don'ts. Well, this is our version of do's and don'ts. It's yeah. kind of like what peeves us the most. Yeah. But I think what peeves us the most peeves everybody pretty much. Yeah, some... We're, I think it peeves everybody, but the intensity level of it will yeah. range for people. Mine are pretty high. Yeah. But and, and these are in no particular order because they all piss us off. Yes. Some more than others, but I, I, it's it's all pretty close. So I just yeah. kind of threw them up there random random order. So um, the first one is pets. Yes. Now, people have obnoxious pets sometimes that just bark all the time, and then they say, "Oh, well, well, my dog doesn't bark." My dog doesn't bark. Of course, they don't bark while you're there. Yeah. But as soon as you leave, as soon as that car leaves, they are barking at everything. The entire time <laughs> you are gone, your dog is barking. The minute they see somebody they bark so that's the that's the biggest problem with the pets is the barking and and the, and I hold campgrounds accountable for this too but every campground says your pet will not be unattended it will not be tied up outside without supervision and yet people do it yeah they got them on on leads or tie downs or whatever and just having your door open and the screen door shut does not mean you are watching your pet yeah we've seen ones where people have them tied out and there's not even shade yeah where the pet is and that's just not cool no um the other thing is um the leash because there's all kinds of pets we have a bearded dragon yeah and we have him out and we follow the leash rule yes we he's do. always on a leash when he's outside yes so if you have a dog who is not on a leash and comes over and eats my lizard I'm gonna kick your ass and probably kill your dog. Probably. Just be warned. <laughs> <laughs> or I should add, don't be holding the leash and your dog's walking next to you without the leash on. And then as soon as you see people, you're like, oh, let me put my leash on. Or the leash is attached, but you're not holding it. He's just dragging it's that just, thing all he's around. He's walking itself. Part. Yes. <laughs> that annoys me too. We'll move on from the pets and talk about tow vehicles. Okay. A couple of things with tow vehicles bother me. A, when people park them in a manner in which it allows you to not be able to get out of your spot or in your spot. Yes. Now it's okay. It's okay if you're home and are willing to relocate your vehicle to allow me to get in or out. That's okay. Yeah. But don't park your vehicle all dorked up and then not even be around. Yeah. Just that happened to us one time when we was really tight. I had to back out of a pull through spot because somebody had their truck parked right close to ours, to ours and they weren't even home yeah so i knocked on the door nobody there answers no. nobody can move so i gotta do the rigmarole to try to get out of my space because you parked like an idiot yeah so yeah the other thing that bothers me about tow vehicles and this this applies to class a's also yeah is okay i get it. if you want to leave early in the morning that's cool that's your prerogative <laughs> leave but don't crank your vehicle up and let it run for, for half, half an, an hour. hour. That was painful. Before you leave. Especially if your tow vehicle's parked on my bedroom slide side. Yeah. You're parked over there and you fire that thing up at six o'clock in the morning, just let her run, man. Yeah. Not cool. No. Uh, the next thing is cleanliness. And I know this torques you pretty good. Oh, my OCD just goes bonkers <laughs> over this. Oh my God. Yeah, some people just have stuff all over the place, especially the long-termers. I'm not bashing the long-termers, no, but they're generally the ones who have a bunch of stuff everywhere in no particular order. It looks kind of like a yard sale outside their RV. Yeah, some we couldn't tell if they live inside or outside because almost yeah. everything they own seemed to be outside. So I would say tidy up because... Well, it, and it's a deterrent to want to go back to these campgrounds Yeah. when when and it's another reason campgrounds got to be held accountable too if you let if you're going to have long-termers in your park hold them to a standard don't put anything and everything out that they own and piled up around the rv and under the rv because you have to be appealing to the people who are coming for a couple nights or just yeah. a couple weeks and there's no way you're using all that stuff no there's no way I mean, downsize, man. Get rid of some of that crap. Some of that crap looks like it's been there. You can see the, the bushes growing up around it. Like, yeah. what are you doing? Or they have like 1,900 plants. <laughs> Creating a lot of oxygen. It's like a jungle <laughs> it outside a their jungle. RV. But it, it, it is a turn off to the come and goers. And it's like mental note. Don't know if I want to stay there again because. Looks like a homeless it, camp. It looks, 
<laughs> it almost does <laughs> in some places. Yeah, the next uh, the next thing that really annoys me is when we get somewhere and we're trying to set up or we're getting ready to leave and we're tearing down and somebody wants to come over and have a conversation. <laughs> that is that is a big pet peeve. Now, the only exception to this rule is if you have noticed that I have forgotten something or I'm getting ready to break something or getting ready to hit it's something, by all means, leave something behind. Come yeah. out and and talk to me and tell me. Yeah. But don't just come up and start hanging out hey. having a conversation about hey there where did you come hey, from where are you all from where are you headed what are you doing yeah. alliance how you like that <laughs> i'm trying to set up Let man i set up art now once i get set up I'll, I'll sit and talk with you for hours yeah but the the reason why is because it throws us out of routine you'll miss something we will skip a step yeah could be a crucial step yeah i don't want to break my stuff no in both directions, setting up or tearing down. We go in, a, we're conditioned yeah. to do things in a certain order. And when somebody stops you from doing that, especially for you, because you have your TBI. Yeah, I'll forget. So you, you're going to forget at where you left off yeah. and think you might have left off somewhere that you didn't and go on to the next thing and you've totally exactly. forgotten something. And even if you have a checklist like we do, it's, it can still mess you up. And yeah. um, that's for when you're getting there to set up. But when you're going to tear down and leave, like we're on a schedule, man. Yes. We're trying to get to the next campground at a certain time. Yeah. I like I like to leave within a 15 minute range of the time that we say we want to leave. Yeah. And they're out there just Being having a conversation. Polite as hell. Now, but I, it's yeah, like. It's hard to be mad at, about yeah. that because they're just really nice people. We've never had anybody just come up and be no. an a-hole to us. No. Everybody's trying to, trying to, to but, just be neighborly. But it should be a well-known <clears throat> etiquette that if, when people pull in and when people are getting ready to leave don't interrupt them while they're doing those processes yeah. and another thing that goes hand in hand with that is when people come over and try to help you <laughs> that's your favorite because you don't take the help very well <laughs> no and I, I i do try to be really nice yes you do you do but in my mind but i'm I know, stabbing them in the face I, yes i i can <laughs> see you stabbing them <laughs> Because I don't want help. Uh, if yeah. I want help, I will ask for help. And usually at the time where I, I look like I need help is probably at my most frustrated. Uh, yeah. And you probably should just should, not even come talk to me. No, that's the going back to wait till everybody's yeah. done to, to <laughs> say anything. <laughs> so don't help unless, like I said help earlier, unless, unless, unless I forgot something, I missed something, I'm getting ready to break something or hit something, then come help me. Yeah but don't come help me back into my space. Yeah. You know, don't come help me try to unhitch from the truck. If we want the help, we'll ask for the help. Don't try to help me get straight in the spot. <laughs> Half the time we could care less if I we're care. straight in the spot as long as we're in the spot. We're in the spot. <laughs> it's good enough. Yeah. yeah. All right, the next thing is um, mind your hose. <laughs> A lot of times the, uh, the old stinky slinky is in someone else's yard. Yeah. So, there's a couple things that you really need to, to be cognizant of because your hose is on their yard. And even if nobody's there, uh, we've seen people put their hoses up on people's picnic tables. Yes. Or just throw it over into their area and stuff leaking out yes. onto the yes. to the next person's living space. Yeah. Just because someone's there, not, not or there. just someone's not there, doesn't mean someone's I mean, not gonna, gonna be, be there, there very soon. Yeah. And now they got waste on their the picnic, picnic table. table kills me the most that we have seen more people yeah. place their black tank accessories on the next empty picnic table while they're doing stuff and i'm yeah. like the next person who comes has no idea what just happened on there. yeah or if you're trying to rinse out all your stuff rinse out your hoses or your connections yeah. or all that stuff just be cognizant that you're over there in, in someone else's living space so there are uh, products that you can use to clean your yeah. your black tank products without spraying crap water all oh. over the place <laughs> so don't just be you know blasting black tank residue <laughs> all over the neighborhood man it's not cool and then no. the, and the thing that goes with that is wear gloves oh my Please god wear gloves the amount of americans camping that are not wearing any kind of gloves 
when they're doing hose setup or takedown is mind blowing. Yeah, and, I, and for those of you who don't use gloves, because I know there's some of you who are watching who don't use gloves, and you say, oh, it's just my stuff, man. I'd I wash, wash my, hands my hands off afterwards, but that's not the case. What happens is you handle that hose and then you touch your glasses, or you touch your hat, or you, you touch, touch the water the faucet, water you faucet, it off. You touch the picnic table, yeah. you touch all the other hookups that are out there. For somebody else. And then you leave. And the next person comes to hook up, and if they're not wearing gloves, they're touching all your crap. Literally touching all your Heart. crap. I think it, this bugs us the most coming from a medical background. Yeah. And this is why we have Rona. Yeah, this is why we have uncurable <laughs> things because people aren't cleanly. But I think that's why it, it irks us to a higher level. Yeah, because it's others. not just about you. Cause, yeah, because we washed our hands god dozens and dozens of times a day yeah and and wore gloves so we're like come on why why you wouldn't even want to i don't know is beyond me i yeah. i just i don't want anything yeah touching me so but we've seen people like wipe their face because they're sweat and adjust their glass i'm like you were just touching the hose now you've put all those particles and i'm not talking about touching like the outside of the, the middle part of the hose i'm not talking about touching like the connections they've undone they put the cap back on a little bit will dribble out uh, yeah. and they're like wiping their hands on the grass we did see <laughs> that that was crazy they just bent down <laughs> and they just wiped it on the grass and went right back to work but Call it he good. went back into his truck yeah. He did, and he, so he touched his steering wheel. I'm Everything. Like, ah, that is just nasty. Just crap particles everywhere. I'm like, yeah, you do, just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not there. So nasty. It's all oh, just talking about it makes me yeah. <laughs> Again, keep it on that side of the on the other trailer. Um, yeah. Conserve water. Um, this is this is crazy that people will come and hook up their stuff, and they have a, a not a leak, but they're. There, it's not connected Camp properly, properly just... and I got, I got it. Campgrounds need to, you know, maintain their stuff. Yes, a and lot of it is equipment Their problems. threads are warped or whatever, but yeah. um, I have never been to a place where a little bit of uh, Teflon tape didn't fix it all up. Yeah. So just keep a little roll of the Teflon tape, and if your connections are leaking, use a little bit of that. Get it as best you can. If it's dripping a little bit, if, as long as you did the best you can, that's cool. Yeah. But don't just leave it, like, seriously dripping. Dri we, yeah, we've seen that. Where or running. It's just because more that, than the occasional A, drip. it's going to decrease your, your water pressure. Water pressure, yeah. And B, it's going to waste a bunch of water. And when they waste a bunch of water and then the RV park's water bill Jackson goes up, up, guess what? Campground fees go up with yeah. it. So just conserve water. It's the right thing yeah. to do. Um, let's talk about the children. That's my favorite topic. <laughs> oh, the children. It's not the kids' fault. Yeah, and that is what I was about to say. I am not going to completely bash children because they don't know what they don't know. It's the parents. And they really learn is. by example. And I fault the parents yeah, so you for, got, for uncontrolled children. You got kids running around unsupervised. It's always a park rule. It's in there. Yeah. It says children under a certain age are not to be... Running, running around unattended without adult um, supervision. Operating machinery they shouldn't be operating, yes. like golf carts golf and, and, and side by sides and stuff like four that. Wheelers, stuff four like wheelers, four wheelers, uh, because just dangerous. Yeah. And then because they're not watching their kids, they they're having attention. a good time. So they're they're you know running over dogs and co coming close. Even to if hitting Timmy's people. been driving it on your farm since he was five, yeah, does not mean he can drive it in the campground exactly and then the kids are making a bunch of noise which is okay during regular time but in during quiet hours quiet your kids down yes. kids are jumping up on picnic tables yes and i find that very disrespectful to be standing on yeah. park provided you We've know amenity barefoot standing on top of the picnic jumping tables, up and jumping down off and, wrestling a matter of fact and i just, know boys are boys just yesterday yeah there was one that there were two kids they're jumping up and down on the picnic table they jumped off the picnic table the one kid pulled his pants down and, and peed, peed on the ground right there on the site and his parents were sitting there smiling the parents were not discouraging it not only not discouraging it they were encouraging it, it because they were recording all this stuff with their phones they're laughing having a good time so, yeah and they're just teaching their kids that this is this the this way you're supposed okay to act at a campground yeah which is not okay not okay so but it also going with the children is teach your children that it is not okay to walk through somebody's campsite. Yeah, because they'll they'll walk through. They cut uh, through, we've run had, through, have touched our RV, which kick, I don't like. Kick balls off the side of the RV. Yeah. Um, so and no no parents out watching. No. 
just Honestly. crazy. Yeah. Just running amok. But when you go camping, you should tell your children. You yeah. don't walk through somebody else's site. Yeah. You don't touch their stuff. Because they don't know unless you teach them. Yeah. Because they just don't know. Yeah. Just having fun. All right, next thing is, uh, you know, in some campgrounds, there's, there's wildlife. Yes. They're just roaming around the park that are not pets, especially out, out here out west. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's you'll see deer and squirrels and all kinds of stuff that will roam through the uh, through the campground. Yeah. When we were in Florida, we had the um, sandhill cranes. Yeah. In Orlando, I love those. ran around all over the place. But here's here's the thing: when you're in a campground and you see wildlife, don't mess with them. I mean, yeah. you can take pictures of them. You know, if you want to try to get get close to them, if they allow you to feed them, cool, rock on, do that. Yeah. But just be respectful of the wildlife. Um, keep your pets and animals away from the wildlife because you don't you don't know how your pet is going to react. Yes. And you don't know how that wildlife that, is going to react. No. Now we saw a lady in in Orlando that was her dogs were just screwing with the sandhill cranes and Making, she was actually pulling them over there closer but, to the yeah, cranes. Yeah, she kept bringing them closer and they kept jumping and like they would like do their little lunge yeah. and then jump back kind of thing. Yeah. And she was she thought it was funny. But you're stressing the wildlife. But out. yes, that's the thing. The next thing is is noise, and we've talked about. A lot of these things have incorporated noise. Yeah. But you know, every park has has quiet hours unless you're unless you're boondocking or something like that. Yeah. But you know, just be cognizant. Even if you're a weekender, I get it. You're out for the weekend. You want to stay up late. You want to party because it's your weekend. Yeah. But there are rules. Yeah, and 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 I'm a stickler on those, the quiet hours. Yeah. And I'm not talking about if you. I get it if you're sitting having a conversation. Then the walls are thin on they RVs. Are thin. So if you're sitting having a conversation at a normal volume and we can still hear it. That's just nature that's of the beast. A, yes. That's just part of the deal. But if you're playing your music. But if I can hear that. Yeah. Oh was in Louisiana. God. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And then along with that, um, with quiet hours, I, the light discipline goes along with that, I think, too. Yeah. Uh, don't have super bright lights, bright lights. shining yes. all over the place. Um, for us, the little accent lights around the bottom of RVs, that doesn't really bother us. No, I don't. That the, does not the, come The front cap lights on the RVs yeah. don't bother us. We've heard people who say that it does bother them, but it, it really doesn't bother us. Yeah. I'm talking about like bright white lights. Yeah. Like our awning up, up here, our awning is white lights and it'll go all the way across. If yeah. we leave them on, it looks like daylight on our it spot. It does. So we know the camper next to us is going to have some close, light coming yeah. in if we leave those on all night. So yeah. we're very cognizant of that yes. and we'll turn those off. So you should too. Anything that's going to disturb your neighbors, you should be thinking about, is this going to disturb someone, disrupt someone yeah. or cause them to have not a great time? And if you're looking to party, like yeah. the true party with all your friends and be up till two in the morning playing, then you need to go to either boondocking area or somewhere yeah. where spaces are so far apart, yeah. you know, don't go to a packed a RV park where yeah, they're stacked where in. You are side by side by side. That is not where you go to have your party. No, <laughs> you, you need not to go cool. further out into the wild. Well, the basic gist of it all is just use the golden rule. Mm -hmm. Treat people like you want to be treated. Yes. And be cognizant of them because we're all paying for these campgrounds equal amount of money. Yes. And if you do stuff like that, you're really robbing somebody of their money and their happiness. Yes. And their abilities to enjoy their time. So your time is not more important than anybody else's. No. And your good time is not more important than anybody mm -hmm. else's. So just be aware of that. Yes. Um, leave it better than you found it. We've rolled into campgrounds sometimes where it was kind of trashed. I'm so, not. I'm not saying to, to do the landscaping, mow the no, lawn, no. you know, trim the hedges and stuff. No. But if there's trash out there, if somebody Pick broke something, up. report it to the office. Yeah. You know, make sure stuff's working properly. We've and, been to sites with cigarette butts, beer cans, just all over. Yeah. So we did pick that up, and you know, snow skin off our back took a couple minutes, and you know, whoever left that there, it. It could have been picked up by them in a couple minutes too. Yeah. Speaking of barking dogs, our the, neighbor's gone. The whole time we've been out here, it's yeah, been barking. And their dog barking the entire time. Yeah. But they'll come back and be like, our dog don't bark. Yeah. Hmm, our dog's good. Yeah. He just sleeps. Now, it's not just one sided. We're not going to talk a lot about it, but the etiquette does go both ways. And mm -hmm. the campgrounds should be doing the right thing also. Yes. Trimming their bushes they're low hanging branches yes. we've been in lots of places where we've had to take a different route in trees. or out or trim it ourselves <laughs> because it was just too low our rv is going to hit it yeah so we had to find an alternate route to get in or out or had to trim the trees ourselves 
Yeah. So, um, and then the other thing is, you know, their campgrounds need to make sure that their that their water spigots are working properly, their power mm -hmm. pedestals are working properly, their amenities are updated, and yes. and what they advertise on their website is actually working when you get there. Otherwise, yeah. they should lower the price. They don't do that. Yeah. That's a whole That's other video. <laughs> We're right now just talking about what you should be doing as the camper in a campground. Um, but it is frustrating when the campground doesn't do the right thing either. Yeah, and we're solely basing it off of our experiences, our yes. perspective. Yeah. I uh, know some people will probably be offended at some of the stuff <laughs> we said, but these are our opinions yeah. to our experiences. And yeah. everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Yeah. But anyway, that is our list of campground etiquette do's and don'ts. And if you have something that uh, you think we need to add to our list, let us know. Or if you want to share an experience that you had at a campground, uh, oh, leave yeah. us a comment and let uh, us know what's, some good <laughs> what's happened to you out there. <laughs> and just know if you ever camp next to us, what we're expecting. Yeah. <laughs> well, like we do at the end of all of our videos, we're going to honor a fallen hero. If you want to help us get involved with helping veterans out there on the road, everything you need to know is down there in the description of this mm -hmm. video. We appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Shut up, dog! <laughs> <laughs>